Hey, thanks a lot. And uh, first, let me introduce myself. And before that, let me uh, uh, say that it's always uh, great to see so many people in this room, <laughs> people who are interested in Rust. And uh, the language itself has started uh, about two years ago, um, less than um, a little bit more than two years ago. And there will, uh, were maybe a couple of hundred of people who were interested in that language. And now it's really great to see that it's getting traction and see a lot of people in this room who are interested in this topic. So um, uh, introducing myself, uh, my name is Nikita. I work at MateSafe. And MateSafe is a company that um, develops peer-to-peer uh, -peer network technology. And I think we have um, one of the largest code bases that are written in Rust. So today I want to share, our, uh, share my experience developing uh, one, of the uh, one of the libraries that comprise our stack. And today I want to talk to you about parsing. So parsing is uh, one of the crucial uh, steps in the, in the topic of compilers. And the compilers is a, a complex topic by itself. So it's, uh, it will be mm, almost impossible to cover all the things that go into compilers in 20 minutes. So this will be more like more a, of an observing uh, talk. So I will cover the basics. And my uh, goal here, uh, my goal today is uh, not to uh, give you the entirety of information about compilers, but to inspire you and um, basically to pick your interest. And actually, uh, compilers is a complex topic, and a lot of people are scared by it. Uh, they open the Dragon Book, they see that it uh, consists of more than 1,000 pages, and they close the book and never read it again. But actually, compilers are a very interesting topic, and uh, if you uh, take one part of it, uh, they can be immensely useful, and they're not that complex. So let's start from the basics. So how, uh, how parsing can be useful for you? So what is actually parsing? So if you don't know, it is uh, one of the steps in the compiler um, you know, which allows you to extract meta information about your code. So you can actually imagine the compiler as a kind of a pipeline that consists of several steps. And the first step in the compiler is uh, the lexical parsing, uh, the, um, excuse me, the lexical analysis. The lexical analysis is a, a simplest step that gets your code in its text representation and transforms it to a set of tokens. A token is a very simple thing and uh, can be thought of as a word. Uh, it can be a keyword, it can be a string, out of your code, it can be a number, it can be basically anything. A ret return is a, co uh, is a token, a fan is a token. But having just tokens, we can do many useful things with them, right? Uh, we can do many useful things with uh, just code as text. So what we do here is we put tokens in, a token, in token trees. And out of those token trees, we uh, create, um, out of those token trees, we create a data structure that's, uh, that is called abstract syntax tree, or AST for short. Uh, AST allows us to extract meta information out of our code and use it, this information to do basically anything. So how uh, do we apply ASTs for our practical code? You might think that ASTs are usable only for uh, the Rust compiler itself or for uh, building some, I don't know, some utilities or uh, things that belong to the Rust compiler. But actually, ASTs have many uh, everyday applications. Uh, so you can extract uh, meta information from your code and based on that um, information you can uh, generate code in other languages. 
This is very useful if you want to, uh, for example, if you deal with FFI or foreign function interface and you want to create a library in Rust that you want to be, make use, usable from other languages. And it will be very tedious and complicated to write this code in other languages to work with your Rust library. That's why we have um, uh, ASTs. You can basically scan all of your library's code and extract that information about the functions that you export from your library and generate code in other languages based on that extracted information. And you can also transform your code. It is practically uh, when you want to apply some kind of refactoring to your code, and I believe the next talk will, will be on this topic. Uh, so, for example, you have Clippy that shows you uh, many compiler errors in your uh, Rust code. And um, it's not, uh, it, it is very useful, but it will be very nice if it could uh, do automatic transformation, automatic refactoring of your code, right? So that's what you can do with AST. With AST, you have uh, full information about your code, and you can also generate new code out of ASTs. So basically what you do here is you, you're taking the code of your library and you're generating new code based on, uh, based on that code. And as an output, you have a refactory code. And there is also the metaprogramming aspect. It's basically related to macros, and macros are very similar to how ASTs work. So macros basically employ the AST framework that you have in your compiler, uh, but uh, the macros are accessible to uh, only uh, within the scope of the compiler. And with AST, you have uh, the full information about your code. So uh, basically, that means that with metaprogramming, you can uh, generate any Rust code based on uh, the full information that you have extracted from the AST. And of course, you can use ASTs to compile uh, your code to a binary, but uh, thankfully Rust, uh, the Rust compiler does that part for us. And of course you need to know that the use cases are not limited to those that were listed on the previous slide. There is a lot of, uh, there is a lot more use cases and they are basically limited only by your imagination. Uh, but of course, uh, ASTs by themselves are a pretty abstract concept. Uh, how do we actually apply them to Rust? Because uh, this is talk about uh, the Rust language, right? And in fact, uh, Rust uh, libraries, multiple Rust libraries already apply that concept, and we use these tools every day. And Rust FMT is also another uh, great example of code transformation, because what it does is basically takes uh, the AST that it has extracted from the source code and outputs this AST with a, um, with a formatting that follows the you know, presets, preset uh, rules about the, how indentation should work, how to, put it, uh, how to put the brackets, where to put the brackets, and so on. And Clippy is a similar beast. So uh, it extracts the meta information from AST and based on that extracted, extracted information, it checks uh, whether your code has any bad patterns in it and suggests uh, how to fix those bad patterns. And there is no magic in it. You can basically write your own Clippy uh, based on uh, the compiler technologies. And finally, if you use IDEs or um, text editors with uh, uh, with the Racer plugin installed, you're also using ASTs. ASTs extract information from your code, and uh, you have code completion, uh, syntax highlighting, and all the nice things that uh, IDEs provide you. So IDE is basically a compiler that a uh, compiler that extracts information from your code and um, makes it more usable and convenient for you to uh, write your code in the user's interface. So, uh, uh, how do we actually use these ASTs? And of course, you don't have to write your own library or you don't have to write your own code to uh, extract this information or parse your code into ASTs. You, uh, 
you have it already in the Rust compiler, and you can use uh, the uh, lib syntax that is an integral part of the compiler to uh, basically extract this uh, parse information and use it in your code. Uh, there is a caveat, though, uh, that lib syntax library is uh, available only in, uh, in the NIDL version of compiler. And uh, Rust uses it to parse your code, and uh, it provides it as a, basically an, as an API. But if you uh, can't use uh, the Nightly version of the compiler, the, uh, an alternative version will be uh, Syntax. That is a crate that has been ported from lib syntax to a separate crate. It's basically a, a code that has been taken from the Rust compiler and put into a crate that can work on a stable branch of the Rust compiler. And it's, uh, it has the exact same API, so you can uh, basically use it interchangeably in your library if you want to. Uh, if you are not allowed to use a NIDL version of compiler, you can basically uh, just link this, this uh, library and uh, uh, it's a drop-in replacement. But uh, there's another caveat in that uh, this library has been deprecated uh, and uh, its usage mostly uh, confined to legacy projects. Well, you can still use it. It's still available on the grades.io repository. Um, but uh, there is also an alternative, and if you're starting a new a version of your, um, basically if you're starting from scratch and not from some kind of legacy code, you can use uh, an alternative library that's called S-Syn, S-Y-N. And uh, it is used by multiple projects too, and this syntax crate is used by uh, Rust FMT stable, so it's basically a matter of preference. Although the authors of uh, this library uh, would prefer you to not use it. So how do you actually, uh, to put it in uh, practical terms, how do you actually use that? Um, you basically import the syntax, uh, which is a part of the Rust compiler, as a crate. You add a uh, separate um, feature flag that says that it's allowed to import uh, private parts of the Rust compiler, and you basically import it and use it as a, as a usual library. So uh, then you provide a file name uh, of a Rust file that you want to uh, parse, and as, a, and as a result, you get a vector of items. So items are actually enums uh, that represent all that you can uh, use in your code. So it represents functions with their arguments, it represents uh, statements, it represents all the expressions that you have in your code. And a uh, nice thing about it uh, is that it's an enum, and as you know, uh, we have uh, a very nice language construct in Rust that works with enums that is uh, called match. And by using pattern matching, it's very uh, simple. Uh, it's very easy to uh, actually extract the information from those items. Uh, you basically match on the type of your AST item, uh, which uh, could also call, carry the, all the relevant information with it in its enum variant. And you use it how, how, however you like. Uh, so that's how it could look. Uh, it could be a function declaration, which has its inputs, its uh, arguments, with, uh, together with its types, and it has also an output type. Uh, so it goes on like that with other kinds of uh, items, with other kinds of ASTs. So uh, it's not a rocket science, so you basically can uh, continue in the same manner. And finally, uh, there is a code generation aspect. So um, code generation has a lots and lots of uh, useful and practical applications. So it, uh, for, for example, when Mozilla started to develop Servo, 
uh, they stumbled upon an issue that there is uh, many libraries that are not written in Rust yet. <laughs> so uh, to use these libraries that are written in C and C++, they uh, got together with a, a library that's called Rust Bindgen. So what it does, basically it uses CLang uh, to extract the meta information from C++ code. Uh, so basically you can think about it as, a, as an analog of uh, that lib syntax from the Rust compiler, but it works for C++. So it extracts the meta information from the C++ code and uh, generates code in Rust. So that, uh, that way you get uh, a library that can talk to a C++ library, but you don't need to write it by hand, which will be, of course, very tedious and error prone. Uh, so then there is a serialization uh, aspect. So if you work with Protobufs or Aro or other frameworks that work with other languages, they basically follow the same pattern. They have a description of data structures that you might need to use in uh, different languages. And uh, they basically use code generation to uh, provide this feature. And uh, in Rust, you can do the same. And I believe there is already a bunch of libraries that provide this thing for you. But if you want to uh, make a similar thing, you can use code generation as well. And finally, why, uh, why do we use ASTs? Why do we use parsing instead of, um, instead of just going by macros? Uh, well, uh, first of all, macros don't have uh, access to the environment that you uh, run your program in. So uh, macros are kind of isolated by the compiler context. They can't access the input output. They can't read a file from uh, your file system. They can't go to the network and so on. And with, and with parsing, by parsing your code, you can basically have, can have a, the, all the power that Rust, the Rust compiler and the Rust language provide you. And, and not only the Rust uh, language and uh, the, the full power of your environment. And uh, a second aspect of it is that uh, Macros 2.0, that should be uh, available in the Rust compiler soon, should cover at least a part of these use cases. So you might want to follow this closely. And finally, how do you actually generate your code? Uh, you can use a tool that utilizes the builder pattern. You basically call uh, the functions. Uh, so to construct a function, you will call uh, item fn and provide the context of that function. You provide the function name, you provide the function arguments, and you provide the function body. And as a result, you will get the uh, uh, ast item that will uh, contain on all the relevant information for your function. And from that ST item, you can uh, convert it into, into a string and get the Rust code as a result. But it's not very convenient. So what we can use instead, we can employ the concept that is called quasi-quotation. Quasi uh, it is uh, widely known and widely used in uh, the Lisp language and it's widely used by some functional languages like Haskell, for example. And the concept is quite simple. It's uh, very resembling uh, of macros, but actually instead of, uh, instead of outputting just a string, it provides you with tokens and the ASD items that you can use further. So there is also a Rust library that, uh, that's called Quote that provides a bunch of handy macros that you can use to generate your code. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, almost the same as uh, you would have written it if you have dealt with macros. So you can just uh, create a new identifier and uh, place it in your code instead of a placeholder. And as a result, and as a result if you convert it into a string, uh, you will get uh, a resulting function, a resulting source code, and you can output it into a file or do whatever you'd like with it.
And finally, a small case, uh, a small case study about how can you use parsing in your project. So um, at MateSafe, we dealt with um, uh, our task will, was to provide a, a library to be used in uh, uh, basically in multiple languages. We have a library that talks to a P2P network, a peer-to-peer -peer network, and we want people to use it from uh, basically any language that exists. And we provide this library as an FFI interface, so it exports a frame function interface, and it's available as a C library, as any other C library. But as we want it to be used by um, as we want it to be used by JavaScript or from Python and from Java and from other languages, we uh, and it's a very tedious process to just uh, write that uh, code by hand to write the language bindings code by hand. We came up with that uh, solution of um, parsing, basically parsing our entire library and export. Um, looking at the exported FFI functions and create, uh, generating Java and C-sharp and Python code based on that. And besides that, uh, Java wouldn't work uh, simply with that code, so we also generate uh, JNIP bindings in Rust. So we generate Rust code that exports uh, JNIP functions that Java understand, and that's, uh, the entire code of that library is, is generated by uh, basically, as a result of code generator and the parser. <coughs> so um, that's it. And if you have any questions, please ask. <laughs> okay. I've got a question. Um, is it possible to manipulate the ASD uh, during the compile time? Mm. I mean, if I'm compiling my source code, my library, and I want to replace some structures during the compile time of the same library I'm compiling. Well, possible with Mac or well the question is, uh, uh, can you use, uh, basically, can you transform ASTs uh, in the compile time? So when you're compiling your library, can you transform the ASTs to uh, have some other representation? And of course, uh, it is possible, and you do it with macros. So basically, that's what macros does. They take uh, the AST tree, and they produce another AST tree. So um, that is sold by macros, and also there is a procedural macros thing, and there is also uh, macros 2.0. So Rust provides multiple ways to transform your code to some other representation, and you can choose whatever suits you better. Right. Well, specifically, I was thinking about like generating a mock object and mm -hmm. replacing it with, with original instead of original structure, so that during the specific test case, I I would be using not the original structure mm -hmm. but the generated one. Yeah. And so that I wouldn't need to define traits for that. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, so the question is, um, can you basically do a mock testing in Rust by replacing uh, structures with uh, some other version, with versions with instrumentation and test functions and, all, and so on? And yeah, I believe it's possible if you use uh, the compiler plugins and the procedural macros. And if you use the derived key keyword, uh, that's what it basically does. And that's also how, CERDA, uh, how the CERDA library works. It uh, derives your structs. So you just write derive serialize. And the rest, uh, the CERDA library takes uh, that um, instruction and generates uh, the serialization and deserialization code for your structure. So I believe that uh, can work in a very similar way for uh, the mock uh, testing and the mock features of, um, so for the mock version of your structs. Any other questions? We can take one more. I think it was not an easy rust. I was just wondering if there's already a parser generator that, for example, takes an Android grammar and generates the body of a parser. Yeah, so the question is, is, a, is there a project in Rust that, um, that is a, basically a compiler generator that takes a description of a compiler and generates a compiler from, uh, uh, from the BNF grammar or whatever it's called? 
Uh, yeah, there is, uh, there is a bunch of such projects. I believe uh, one is called LALR, and it is based obviously on uh, ladder parsing. So, yeah, there are, there's a multiple projects, and you can basically find them by Googling uh, Rust compiler generator. And uh, there is a prominent uh, ones and uh, active, that are being actively developed, so you can find many of them. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks all for your attention.